Hey, Deke here, doing the Gabe Velarde Injury Update, June 27, 2019. You know, if I knew this was going to go on forever, I would have come up with a better name. Maybe a back, back, back update or something like that. Uh, so, the Los Angeles Kings just concluded their uh, draft this past weekend. They had a good draft, I think. Uh, and now it's development camp time. And there had been hope that a Mr. Velarde would appear like a ray of sunshine uh, at the development camp. And lo, it did not happen. <laughs> Kings announced that uh, he would not be attending and apparently that he's not even skating. And thus do things grow dimmer and darker in the Gabe Velarde uh, alley. So just to refresh your memory, Gabe Velarde, 2017, first round pick of the LA Kings. I incorrectly said that he was the third overall pick in a previous video. He was the 11th overall pick. Uh, he was the third ranked kid going into the draft, uh, but eight teams passed on him. And supposedly it was because of his skating. Uh, but given his health situation, man, sometimes you wonder. Uh, let's just say I imagine the Kings <laughs> doctors who inspected those medical records may be a little nervous. Uh, nonetheless, uh, gave Lardy's game. I like to call him the war hog. Not the speediest of guys, but a center, uh, can play wing, incredible on the walls. Uh, total control of the puck. Once he's got it, good luck getting rid of it. Incredibly strong hands, uh, great vision, uh, incredible passer, great shot. Um, just, you know, an all around really good, good player. Somebody that can really help you win a cup. You know, not the most flashy guy, but one of those guys that's going to, you know, help you get there in the important games. And, uh, in the Kings situation, he was particularly important because, of course, the Kings had traded away first-round picks forever. They had, you know, almost no prospects when Velarde was picked. And, you know, by now you would hope that he would be uh, taking minutes away from Kopitar, you know, if not even potentially being the 1C now and bumping Kopitar to 2C. Uh, Kopitar is a great player, but he is extremely overused by the Kings. Uh, you know, he's going to be 32 at the start of the season. Uh, the guy is doing, you know, 22 minutes a night, 23 minutes a night, plays in all situations. And, uh, you know, you kind of fear what he's going to look like at 35. Uh, if Velarde had been there, he would certainly at least be the 2C uh, at this point and be taking minutes away, you know, uh, some of the difficult minutes that Kopitar's had to shoulder with Jeff Carter fading away badly. Uh, and to give you a comparison uh, to other players as to where maybe Velarde should be, um, you can look at you know Nolan Patrick and Hershier with the Devils. They were drafted, uh, or they were in the same draft. Not like they're setting the world on fire, but at least they're playing. He would have hoped Gabe would have you know perhaps made the team last year if he had been healthy and you know would be on his way to a solid career. Best laid plans. <laughs> That's not exactly happening. Uh, so what happened with Gabe? Well, we know he had a back injury of some sort. We're not exactly sure when it happened, um, but, uh, you know, through 2018, we heard all these positive reports from the Kings. At one point, Rob Blake made it sound like Velarde just needed to do more sit-ups, um, and all of that turned out to be nonsense, like much of what Rob Blake said in 2018. Uh, remember, the Kings are going to be contenders. Yeah, that worked out well. Uh, so anyways, um, Gabe was supposed to appear at all these events in the summer, you know, various camps and training camp and what have you, and he didn't appear at any of them. And uh, as he started missing these, people started growing concerned. And then, uh, lo and behold, we got video in November. And there was Gabe on the ice with a rehab person and a puck, and it did not look good. It, they were at the training facility, an LA Kings insider, I can't remember which one, um, shot the video, and Gabe looked like he was about 90. He was, you know, ramrod straight. Couldn't bend over. It was just ugly. Uh, but then two weeks later, the same person got another video of him out on the ice, and he looked great. Cutting all kinds of corners, you know, being nimble on skates. Uh, he looked really, really good. And, uh, you know, there was some hope amongst Kings fans that, you know, something had happened, and he was recovering and ready to go. It was about that time that uh, Bob McKenzie, of all people, said that, uh, that Velarde had had some kind of a surgical procedure. You notice the Kings didn't say anything, just the Velarde uh, or just uh, McKenzie. And uh, so in King circles, there was the big hope that this is it. Gabe is cured and let's get him on the ice. And in fact, he did go on the ice. He went to the AHL uh, affiliate of the Kings, the Ontario ring. He did four rehab games, looked rusty, um, you know, probably not in the best shape, but he looked, uh, you know, you can see, see what, 
you know, the hype was about. His hands were great. He was good on the walls, you know, excellent passing. Uh, pulled himself out of a, a last game because uh, he felt something kind of odd and went to a specialist, but it wasn't thought to be a big deal. They sent him off to the Canadian uh, development camp for, I think it was the under-20 team, under-18 team. I don't know what it was, uh, but an uh, upcoming tournament, and they were considering it a big boon that Gabe was going to be able to play. And then there was a video of, <laughs> of the team practicing. The video was kind of up in the stands. It was actually somebody doing a report, a, a reporter doing a report, and the video is looking at him. But the, the camera's looking down, so you can see the ice behind them. You can see the team practicing, and then you can see Gabe off on the left uh, skating around slowly with the puck. And again, he looked like a 90-year-old man. And so uh, Gabe did not make the team for obvious reasons. And uh, then it was silent. And then at the end of December of 2018, we got a report from the Kings. Gabe Velarde was being sent back to his junior team in Kingston, which seemed kind of odd. Wouldn't you think the Kings would have better you know, medical uh, facilities and uh, resources than a junior team in Kingston? Uh, but nonetheless, off Gabe went. And it turned out that that's where Gabe's family actually is. And so he went back home, basically. Uh, and he gave an interview with the newspaper in Kingston called The Wig Standard, in which he said basically he'd been doing four to six hours of rehab a day with the Kings, which sounds like a crap load for a back. Um, but nonetheless, he'd been doing it, and he did not feel good. It had not gone well. And uh, so <laughs> he was going back to Kingston and he was going to cut the rehab down to about, you know, an hour a day, maybe, and just kind of rest and try and let his back, you know, heal up. And uh, it was announced that he would not be skating uh, for the rest of the, the year uh, with the uh, junior team, which was the, their season ended in March. So it wasn't as long as it sounded. Um, and that was kind of the last we heard. We did hear from the GM from Kingston who did not really sound very happy with the Kings. Uh, he made it sound like, you know, basically what the hell did you do with my player? He was fine when he left. Uh, <laughs> and so, and then we had silence. And so the big thought was, okay, give him six months off, let him heal. You know, let's see him in, uh, you know, the summer 2019. And here we are. So the Kings had their draft development camp right after that. And the announcement came. Gabe Lardy would not be attending the development camp. And it sounds like he's not even skating. So, not great news. Uh, so, effectively, this means Gabe hasn't really been skating in a year. He did the four rehab games, um, you know, and obviously a little bit of skating before that. And that sounds like about it. So, this may be a case where no news is not good news. Uh you know, you have to worry about him. Uh, you know, I think the bigger concern is also not only, you know, is he going to come back? Is he going to get to a level where he can skate? But Velarde's game is about banging. It's about being on the boards and, you know, powering around the boards. And if you have a bad back now, well, what happens when Dustin Bufflin, you know, checks you into the wall? Um, so <laughs> it's not sounding good. And I'm a huge Gabe Velarde fan. I think he's a tremendous player and you have to feel for the kid, you know, his NHL career and it's just about to start and all this mess. Uh, so the final thread, well, there are two threads that the Kings are, or the Kings fans are hoping for. One is just the Kings are idiots and don't say anything. They, they have some terrible communication practices with their fans. So, uh, I mean, they won't even talk about the most mundane things. It's just, it's just amazing. Um, so maybe the Kings just haven't released information. Maybe Gabe's doing better. Maybe he shows up at training camp and he looks good. It could happen. Uh, the second thing is that uh, you know, we all are looking at Jake Muzzin, of all people. Uh, Jake Muzzin, when he was a prospect, had a very bad back injury. And uh, they tried to treat it different ways and nothing worked. And then eventually he underwent major surgery where they you know, opened him, opened him up and dug around in there. And uh, as you obviously know, uh, it worked. And Jake became a fully functional NHL defenseman cup winner. Um, you know, obviously I think he's 31 or 32 now. So he's had a fruitful career playing with Toronto now. And, um, you know, it's all good with Gabe's or with uh, Jake. And so the hope is, you know, maybe as a last resort, they do major surgery on Gabe and that solves the problem. Um, but, you know, even that you're looking at probably another year to 18 months of him out, which would mean that he hadn't played hockey, you know, competitively, uh, you know, in a serious manner 
in two years, two and a half years, maybe three years by the time he's back. Whew, that is a long time. <laughs> uh, again, I'm a big Gabe Vlardy fan. I hope I hope he's doing better, and you know, I hope the back's resolved and he's ready to play. Um, but at least as of June 27, 2019, uh, it's kind of a grim Gabe Vlardy injury update based on what we know. So, anyways, uh, hopefully it's just all speculation. And right now he's dating a yoga instructor, and he can bend his legs over his head like nobody's business. Uh, so, anyways, that's it for the Gabe Vlardy injury update. And uh, any news that we hear in the future, that'll be good. I'll certainly let you know. Have a good one. Deke out.